Hi and welcome to my soul tribe, my name is Miriam Rose. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe, set your bell on all, like, comment and share, as I really appreciate all of your support. Now let's get on with the video. My dearest brothers and sisters, this is Hakan speaking. You have all my love and respect for how well you are navigating these times. Even if some of you are stumbling, most galactics would have broken their legs if they had been born in your situation instead of merely stumbling. I'm happy and grateful that I am once again in a situation where I can get to answer your questions. Question. Dear Hakan, thank you very much for your help and your kindness. It is like a bomb for me. I have two questions for you. One about our punitive system the other about medical treatments we provide for so-called mental illness. What do you think of our punitive system? Do you think it is inevitable at this stage of evolution of our consciousness or can alternative systems already be proposed? What do you think about what we call mental illness and the way we treat it? Thank you very much for your help. Answer. Thank you for your question and for your compassionate heart. As you may have guessed already, we are not fans of the idea of punishing people by locking them up in small rooms. From our perspective, people need love and the more that people so-called misbehave, the more love that they offer need. If one of our people intentionally unalived one of his brothers or sisters, then first we would restrain him so that he was unable to unalive other people. Then we would seek to understand him and offer him love and access to our healers as we would try to make sure that all his needs were met, including his social needs. We would make sure that this person was unable to harm other people until we were sure that he would not do it again, but otherwise we would not harm or punish him. In practice, this would limit his freedom to an extent. However, we do not do this to punish him, but to protect other people. We would offer the killer the opportunity to talk to the family and friends of the unalived person, and we would offer the killer the opportunity to experience being unalived himself from the perspective of the victim, which we can do either via technology or via psychic powers. We don't do this as punishment, but as an opportunity to create empathy and understanding. Likely, the killer would get his full freedom back once he does this thing, because in almost all cases this ensures that the killer will not do so again. We are mind readers, so it is easy for us to verify whether people are still dangerous or not. To answer your question, we think it is regrettable that you are locking people up in small rooms because you are them and they are you. In effect, if you lock up or judge someone else, you are doing that to yourselves. In the vast majority of cases, people commit crimes because they did not receive enough love and did not get their needs met, and in most cases, Cases, giving them love and making sure their needs are met is enough to solve crime. That said, so long as many earthlings have a relatively low level of consciousness and willing to commit crime, and so long as earthlings live in a scarcity-based society, the current system of punishment will probably largely endure. Perhaps you will move more to a Norwegian system than an American system, but we don't think that you will truly make the leap towards give criminals love and meet all their needs, so long as you live in a system where people need to work to survive. We foresee that once you move to a post-scarcity society, and this may happen sooner than you think, then you can really start to reform your punitive system. Then it will start to make sense to just meet all the needs of your criminals, including material needs. That said, we are actually in favor of the death penalty in certain specific cases, which I suspect may surprise you. The reason for this is that all humanity is connected through the same collective subconscious. Therefore, if you have a truly evil person, not just any random murderer, but a truly evil person, then that person is constantly emitting very negative vibrations throughout the entire collective subconscious. Therefore, they are holding back the liberation of humanity just by their presence on the planet. We have repeatedly said that the presence of light workers on this planet is crucial for the liberation process. Well, the presence of certain very evil people does the opposite of this and slows everything down. Therefore, we support the death penalty for those people if they are not willing to receive healing and are not willing to see and learn the perspectives from their victims. Note that so souls reincarnate, which makes the death penalty significantly less harsh than the death penalty would be if souls did not reincarnate. In some cases, these people will be allowed to reincarnate. In some cases, souls will actually decide to unmake their souls after their death. And in some cases, they will go to the lower planes because they have literally sold their souls. As for mental illness, unfortunately, we think that your entire society is toxic. We think it's logical that people develop so-called mental illnesses in such a society. Frankly, we are surprised that not more people 
are mentally ill. A lot of things that society encourages you to put in or onto your body are also toxic. It is good to have a skeptical attitude, but in some cases these things are hard to avoid. One thing that helps very much is a water distiller, because there is stuff in tap water that we do not think is good for you. Crystals can also help with purifying water on an energetic level. I think in a lot of cases the correct way to treat mental illness is through love, through physical detox and through a reduction in the stress and loneliness that people experience in life. In a broader sense, it would be good to make life on earth overall less stressful and harsh so that less people become mentally ill. We think that medications and drugs are very much overused and overprescribed on your world, although in some cases they can help. Also, Source loves everyone equally, including the so-called mentally ill. Often these people actually have a lot to teach so-called normal people. Some so-called mentally ill people actually volunteered to live such a life on earth, to shake earthlings out of their normal routines, although other people did not volunteer for this, but they became poisoned or broke under the mental strain of life on earth. Question. Greetings, beloved souls. Thank you so much for the opportunity to ask a question. I'm infinitely grateful for all the helpful nudges of guidance you both provide in your channeled messages. My question is about the timing of disclosure. I am reading channeled messages from a few sources I trust, and the general consensus is that disclosure will be coming soon or even very soon, knowing that you cannot provide a specific date for this to happen. It is safe to say that the soon you speak of is earthling soon. For example, I would consider within a year to be soon, but within the next five years not to be soon. Thank you so much for all the work you do to help us on our collective path towards 5D and beyond. And Thank you for your question and for the light work you have done. We are very grateful to our brothers and sisters in the ground crew, for they are doing a very tough job. You are right that we galactics perceive time as a bit differently. One of the reasons for this is that we are usually at least several hundred years old, so a few years is a small percentage of our life, while it is a relatively larger percentage for your life. So galactics sometimes say soon when they mean within a few years, even though in earthling terms this is not soon. This was a of empathy from the side of the galactics and Tunia and I are trying to keep this in mind. Ultimately it is up to earthlings to provide disclosure and so they are responsible for the date. A very slight form of disclosure has already been happening for some years on your alternative media. Mainstream media disclosure will probably happen within the next three years. It could easily happen a few months from now but we do not want to promise that because it might take a few years still unfortunately. We wish that things were moving more quickly on your world and we understand that many people are suffering. There is also a slight chance that mainstream media disclosure will not even happen within three years, but if the earthling counterforces take that long, then we will start entering territory where there is a good chance that Source will tell us Galactics to take over your mainstream media and broadcast disclosure directly. As Galactics, taking over your mainstream media has some very real disadvantages. As discussed in the earlier message, History of Humanity, we would prefer that earthlings start broadcasting truth via the mainstream media and at this point it is likely that they will do so somewhere within the next three years, possibly quite a bit sooner than that, but unfortunately we cannot promise that this will happen soon in earthling turn. Question. Hakan recently said in one of his channelings that while humans do indeed have free will, the director of our life movie is our soul, which cares less about comfort and joys and more about growth. At the exact same time, Hakan and numerous other beings keep telling us that you can experience anything that you so desire to, or you're more powerful than you think. And other such teachings. But how exactly is it even possible if it is only our souls that call all the shots and what manifests and what doesn't ultimately? Isn't that a glaring contradiction in and of itself? Answer. Great question. I appreciate people who have clearly thought about what spiritual sources are saying and are not afraid to ask questions. Thank you for asking it. It's precisely these questions that can lead to greater understanding. Perhaps I should have been clearer here in the first place. First of all, it is not only your soul that calls the shots. For example, suppose your soul wants to go to Japan, then you will likely feel drawn towards Japan. You might see things about Japan pop up on your television and on your YouTube recommendations. Maybe your friends will start talking about Japan. Maybe you will be presented with a great opportunity to travel to Japan. Maybe there are things that push you away from your current situation and your current way of living to further nudge you towards Japan. However, if you simply choose not to go to Japan, then you will not be in Japan, no matter how much your soul wants you to go there. Your soul is not going to teleport you to Japan. So your soul can nudge you and push you and provide you opportunities and can make certain things easy or difficult for you, but ultimately you choose what actions you take. Your soul determines the context of your life, but you make choices. You can go off script.
script if you want and simply not do what the director wants. That said, it usually leads to an ultimately happier and more fulfilling life if you do follow the director's instructions. Tunia and I are actually a bit critical about manifestation messages that are often spread in the spiritual community. Most people indeed aren't able to manifest anything they desire at will. As for being powerful, there is a huge lack right now of people who are showing bravery, who are standing up and speaking their truth, and who are saying out loud that the Emperor indeed has no clothes. We are not saying this is easy or that you will not encounter resistance, but any regular citizen could actually accomplish quite a lot right now by just speaking out that this way of living isn't working anymore. So in this way, you can accomplish a whole lot. You can also accomplish more than you think simply by being kind. And most people, if they genuinely work towards their dream life and accept that maybe they will trip a few times and will have to get back up a few times, will actually be able to dramatically improve their life. We could also look on an even deeper level at the statement, you can do nearly anything you put your mind to. Here we are talking about the version of you that has integrated its soul. The you in this statement is not the person's rational mind that is sometimes in opposition to its own soul. Rather, it is a you that is one with its soul. One example of someone who integrated his soul is the one you know as Jesus. Several other ascended masters have done the same. I think a lot of people would agree that being you know as Jesus really could do almost anything he put his mind to. Indeed, he could and can. If you consistently ask this question and consistently keep doing what your soul tells you to, then over time you will integrate your soul more and more and you will become more and more powerful. In time, the separation between what you want and what your soul wants will vanish. For me, Hakan, there is no difference between what I want and what my soul wants. The so-called part of me that is not my soul just wants to follow the director's script because I know that this is the best for both myself as well as the people around me. Personally, when I think of myself, I think of my soul as being one part of that, just as I think of my hand as being one part of myself. So if you choose not to do what your soul wants you to do, that is fine, but then your spiritual powers will be a bit more limited. That said, a lot of great earthlings did not integrate their souls, and it is certainly possible to accomplish quite a lot without doing what your soul wants you to do. Question, I'm curious about RH negative blood, light workers and children. Is there any specific mission connected to us? Why does this mutation exist on Earth at all? I believe it is an outcome of a DNA research, but since this mutation involves a high risk of, for pregnancy, I wonder how it is possible that there are still RH negative people existing. Is there a way we can utilize the gifts connected to this mutation for the betterment of all people here? Or maybe it doesn't matter at all. Do you Pleiadians have any blood types or just one? Answer. Those are excellent and very perceptive questions. Thank you. RH negative blood is actually associated with reptilians. People become wiser and more powerful if they have experiences and are touched by both the light and the dark. So from that point of view, having some reptilian associated blood in your veins can be beneficial. People with RH negative blood are not automatically evil or bad. Beings have free will. Earthlings certainly, but reptilians also. People with RH negative blood are still free to choose their own actions. There are also some reptilians who are on the side of the light. Also, you don't need to have RH negative blood to be an effective light worker. The channeler does not have RH negative blood, for example. Not all RH negative light workers have the same mission. However, RH negative light workers are typically a bit more touched by the dark than other light workers, which gives them an edge in certain tasks. Some as directly researching or combating the forces of the dark. That said, I would primarily follow your own soul's guidance. It will take into account your blood group and many other things. Blood groups don't have a huge impact on your life but they do have a slight impact. Other blood groups have slight advantages too. The RH negative mutation exists on Earth because lots of galactic races, including reptilians, long ago gave bits of their DNA to Earthlings. I described this in my message Hakan, History of Humanity. Since then, no one has interfered directly to eliminate RH negative blood, so it is still there. That is also why Earthlings look so different from one another. You have DNA from many different galactic races, and one Earthling has more DNA from one race than another. Earthling has more DNA from another race. Conversely, from an Earthling perspective, all of us Pleiadians look quite similar to another in Earthling terms. We also only have one blood group. Question. Can you see the change of our media narrative in the near future? By media, I mean newspapers, radio and TV. We are staying patient in the shadow doing our work and raising the overall vibrations. But I believe media play a huge role in stopping people from waking up. I so wish for them all to understand the truth. Possibly it is much of a wish right now. Answer. Yes, this is a question 
mentioned that his own light work is mine. I appreciate you for asking what many people want to know. Yes, it is very unfair and lonely and alienating that the media brainwashes most people. However, we galactics are very hesitant to directly take over your media ourselves for reasons outlined in the message Hakan, History of Humanity. What we hope is that Earthling counter forces will take over the media relatively soon and start broadcasting truth. From our personal perspective, the Earthling counter forces are moving slower than is optimal. Unfortunately, while some Earthling counter forces might be opposed to the Dark Controllers who want to control everything, this does not automatically mean that the Earthling counter forces are selfless spiritual masters. Some Earthling counter forces are motivated by greed or personal power or by wanting their specific country to succeed more than they want all of humanity to be free. Some Earthling counter forces still like the idea of them being richer or more powerful or more influential than other Earthlings. Also, the more that light workers help to increase the overall vibration, the closer that the point will come when media starts broadcasting truth again. Thank you for helping with this question. Could you ask the Pleiadians about the Star Wars movies? I have heard it is partly based on real galactic history. Do galactics use lightsabers? Answer yes indeed. Star Wars was inspired by real galactic history. It is great that Ethan Star Trek have given Earthlings some soft disclosure. Your Earthlings are excellent storytellers. I think that once Earth is free, very many galactics will want to hear the stories of Earth. Lightsabers were sometimes used, but more for sport or ceremonially or as a curiosity than for serious combat. From our perspective, your guns are very primitive, but even they would beat a lightsaber in a fight. If I gave you a lightsaber, could you win against someone armed with an assault rifle or even a minigun? Probably not. I know that the Star Wars stories, Jedis, are supposed to be so good that they just stop or melt a swarm of bullets in mid-air or dodge or parry that with supernatural speed. However, anyone who can actually do that could also just disable an enemy combatant with a thought which is more efficient than charging them with a lightsaber. Lightsabers are also not harder to avoid than one of our modern ranged weapons. For combat in the real world, Galactics use ranged weapons, psychic abilities and in a pinch their body. I am trained in what you would think of as a martial art. Although ours uses the conscious manipulation of energy and incorporates psychic abilities, alternatively, a reptilian could easily just rip an earthling apart even without any kind of special training or weapon. That said, I cannot deny that lightsabers are kind of fun and cool. If you want to handle a real-life lightsaber and we consider you to be careful and responsible enough for that, we could lend you one for a while. There are so many wondrous things we would like to show you once we have landed. Question: When do you think the Galactics will begin contacting some of the light workers' physical contact? This is for Hakan. Answer: A very, very few light workers have already been physically contacted. These are primarily world leaders or military commander or special ops light workers in order to coordinate and accomplish certain practical objectives. And in a few cases, we have physically sat down and talked with certain influential people to give them information or to try and convince them to do certain things. We have not yet visited most light workers. We would love to meet all light workers on Earth just for the joy of connecting with you. We have visited around 40% of light workers in their dreams, but often these dreams are not remembered. It is hard to predict when exactly conditions will be right for us to start physically contacting the bulk of light workers. It depends on the choices that Earthlings make. There is a good chance that this will happen between 2023 to 2026, but if Earthlings make choices that delay things, then it might only happen 20 years from now. Question. I want to ask if the Pleiadian star system is mainly of what humans would consider white people. Answer. Yes. From your perspective, most Pleiadians look like white people with a Nordic or Scandinavian appearance. That said, there are other advanced, benevolent, human-like galactics out there who do not have a white skin. Earthlings who look like us are not better or more valuable than Earthlings who do not look like us. Question. Do Pleiadians have pets? How is the relationship with their people? Also, are there wild animals there in both cases, domestic or wild? Do you have telepathic communication with them? Answer. Oh, excellent question. We do not have pets. We do have animal companions on our ship. There are not the property of any one individual, although these animals may choose to mostly spend their time with one or more specific individuals. The ship we are on is intelligent. The ship itself takes care of the animals. The animals do not attack us, for we are loving and unafraid. The animals have different levels of wilderness to them. Some choose to spend most of their time with humans. Others choose to spend most of their time among plants and trees and other animals on our ships. We can communicate telepathically with animals. Different animals have different levels of consciousness. So with some, the communication is a bit more sophisticated than with others. It has happened that we traveled to a planet some animals chose to come along 
wrong for the trip and they then chose to stay on the planet. Of course we let them, we have also picked up certain animals this way. We love animals, I actually have one licking my hand right now. We also think that certain animals are excellent at teaching certain lessons to our children. Question, is there a galactic federation of worlds? Answer, yes there is. But it is more a loose cooperation of being who serves source than a formal entity that forces people to do what it says. As I discussed in my previous message, beings who genuinely serve source do not write laws for other beings who serve source. At most, they will write guidelines or suggestions. So there is no set of laws that the Galactic Federation forces me to follow. That said, there are many beings in the Galactic Federation who have specific skills and information that I do not have. Hence, I can better serve source by talking and cooperating with fellow people from the Galactic Federation. This kind of cooperation is what makes up the Galactic Federation of Worlds. We do not have a formal hierarchy that is enforced with laws and punishment, but we do have what you could think of as competency hierarchy. For example, people recognize that I have certain skills, so I am accepted as a military commander, which is roughly the equivalent of an Earth General. In summary, yes, there is a galactic federation of worlds. It is a group of like-minded beings working together so that they may better serve Source. There is no galactic federation of world leadership that forces people who serve Source to follow certain laws. However, if Source asks them, they may intervene in situations where people are being directly harmed by someone else. Thank you for your questions. I love you very much. In the medium term, very good times indeed are coming. Pleiadian Hakan. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. With absolute gratitude, love and light, cosmic kisses to everyone. Till next time, bye for now.